There's been a lot of buzz recently about Paddletech's new line of raw carbon fiber paddles, especially the Christian Alshon signature paddles. And you probably also heard a little bit about Mark Pickleball as well. Not to pat myself on the back, but I felt like one of the first people to recognize Mark Pickleball's potential because I did a mini review of their Kinetic paddle, which has been rebranded to the O1 paddle probably two months ago or so. But today was the first day that I got to hit not only the Paddletech Band MC 12.7 millimeter paddle, but also the Mark O1X for the first time. So here are my thoughts. I've been saying for a while now that 5.5 inch handles are the perfect sweet spot for being able to fit two hands while also having sufficient stability in the paddle. I've noticed a lot with paddles with shorter than 5.5 inch handles that even for a person like me with fairly average size hands, you tend to have a little bit of trouble actually getting both hands on the paddle without your finger sticking off the bottom. On the flip side, paddles that come out with six inch handles like the Pickleball Apes Proline Energy do have sufficient room for two hands. However, they have very low twist weights and their sweet spots tend to be fairly small because you're losing a lot of that real estate on the paddle face in exchange for a longer handle. So I'm not gonna lie, when Mark Pickleball came out with the O1X showing a 5.75 inch handle with a thinner neck taper to overwrap even longer, I was originally fairly skeptical. The paddle shape itself kind of looked like the Ethos Arette paddle, which with a 5.5 inch twist weight feels like a glorified trainer paddle more than anything else, but this paddle proved to really be anything but that. The things that stuck out to me the most were that the paddle not only maintained the spin levels from the previously branded Kinetic and Krypton paddles, which again are the Mark 01 and 02 respectively, but it also felt extremely stable compared to any other paddle that I felt with a 5.75 inch handle or longer. I haven't had a paddle with that much room in the handle provide that level of stability when it comes to resets probably since I tried the 11624 Hirache X. The only negative thing that stuck out to me, which this is very common with paddles with very long handles because their center of balance is moved higher up the paddle, but the twist weight did feel pretty high. This is definitely a paddle where I felt like I had to anticipate fast shots and speed ups more than the usual paddle because I wouldn't be able to get my paddle in position in time. But overall, like I said, with the level of spin it provides and the stability in comparison to other paddles with that much room in the handle, I'm excited to see more of what this paddle has to offer. The paddle also felt fairly soft. In contrast to the Mark 01 paddle, which was a bit more of an all-court straying towards power, this is the opposite. It's an all-court that strays more towards control. All right, now there's been a lot of hype about the new Paddletech Bantam paddles online. And if there's one thing you need to know about me, it's that I'm very big on forming my own opinions as opposed to trusting that of those around me because every paddle feels different to everybody. Another clarification I wanna make is that today I hit the C12.7, not the CX12.7, which like in my last video, I explained the CX is not quite back up on the USAP approved paddle list just yet. But let me tell you something, I've hit many, many paddles 13 millimeters and under, the Thrive Rush, the Selkirk original Power Air paddles, the Black Ace, and they all have felt like their sweet spots have been the size of a dime. So you can imagine my surprise when this Gen 1 raw carbon fiber paddle, which means again, absolutely no foam anywhere along the edges or in the core itself, had one of the best sweet spots of any paddle that I've tried this year. The three things that absolutely steal the show about this paddle right off the bat is the ball feel and then the power and pop. Now this paddle is a 12.7 millimeter paddle, which is of course smaller than the average for the market. So you were already picturing a paddle with really great power and pop. But what really stuck out to me was that while these were both quite insane when I tested the paddle, the paddle maintained a crazy level of control as well. Again, haven't measured exact numbers yet, but this paddle felt like easily the highest twist weight, most stable, biggest sweet spot paddle of this core size that I've ever seen. The other thing I noticed right away is that this paddle felt significantly less head heavy than vast majority of other paddles on the market of the same shape. And so the hand speed was very easy to achieve. And this clip right here is exactly when I noticed this because it was 96 degrees outside. We'd been playing for an hour and a half. I was extremely tired. And yet when this counter comes in for my opponent, I literally just stick my paddle where I think it should go. And it's just there and it keeps the paddle in the core and it felt extremely stable upon impact. 
So yeah, the strange thing about this paddle is that normally I would say with paddles like the Gearbox and the Yola Gen 3s and the Vatic Oni that if you're coming to those paddles from Gen 2 paddles, then they take a lot of time to adjust to. I would say the same thing if you're coming from a Gen 2 paddle to this paddle, even though it's Gen 1. So yeah, there's a couple of things holding this paddle back from being absolutely outstanding and flawless, but I think from a first impression standpoint, you can see the number of paddles behind me that I've tried. This makes a top five impression for me. It really stuck out. That just wraps up my initial impressions of both of these paddles. You're probably going to see a Chorus Shapeshifter and a Honolulu J2K full review out from me before both of these, but I'm ready to go back out and have some fun with these tomorrow. Make sure you stay tuned for all those upcoming reviews. The best way to do that is to like this video and subscribe and turn on notifications because that really, really helps out the channel. And a little bird told me there might be a little something in these reviews for you guys as well. <coughs> Give giveaway. <coughs> <laughs> Sorry, excuse me. All right, thanks for watching this one, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.